three world ten ball champion. Good afternoon and welcome to the WPA Predator World Temple Championship from the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino in lovely Las Vegas. This next match has the makings of a cracker. The Japanese Joker, Mukioi, and calm, cool, and collected as cool as a cucumber. Ko Pin Yi. It's best of three sets, races to four. It's cool shot. And calling the shots with me for this one is the Toronto Talking Tornado, Jim White. Good afternoon, Jim. Well, thank thank you very much, Mark. If you'd have been here about an hour ago, you would have think that you're, uh, you were a prophet because there were thunderstorms here in Toronto in the end of February, unprecedented. And I was looking out the window when I was listening to the lightning and the thunder, wondering when the twister was going to make its appearance. But thankfully, I'm here with you, and there's nowhere I'd rather be. They've rolled out the red carpet at McCarran Airport, and they've all come in here and taken their limos to the Rio. Uh, no prizes for guessing, guessing which of these top stars have the limos booked at the airport. Kopinyi. Yeah, referee. And Naoki Oi. <laughs> so the balls are set from our referee for this match, Angela Williams. Kopin Yi has won the leg and will break in the first set of a possible three. Let's go. And talking just prior to this match, Mark, we both know that this is going to be a very tough one to call. It's really all going to be about just the roll here or there, maybe a break here or there, and whichever one of them, you know, can solve the mystery that is the break in 10 ball. Successfully completed here by Ko, but no clean look at the one. Yeah, he made the four rail up. You can expect to see that on a nice solid hit on the one ball. One of the wing balls, the corner ones, go around the four rails and go into one of these corners. The nine ball in this case into the bottom right as we look. So it's going to be a push out, Jim. Interesting choice. Yeah, both of these players very attacking by nature. That was a half a chance. And they, they'll know each other's games very well. Get invited into a lot of tournaments in Asia. A lot of tournaments around the world. Both very popular players. Inukioi, yeah, okay, 41 years old now. Maybe hasn't won as much as you might expect him to have won. He did reach the semi-final gym of the World WPA 2012 World Nine Ball Championship. And of course, he's represented his country in the World Cup of Paul on six occasions. But on the solo stage, still looking for that big one. But he's still here, still trying. Oh, what a shot that is. Yeah, jail. Tremendous shot. Beautiful cue ball. Got that one past the side pocket. That was important too. And this is going to take some kind of measuring to escape this trap. Just wondering, might he think of tying the three up with the eight maybe or and playing a deliberate foul or tying another ball up? You know what, Mark? You're right, but there's nothing easy, nothing that's jumping up at me that looks like it's an easy ball to tie up. Maybe try and bank the 10. He's going to try and get the 10 maybe over towards the 3. Oh, I don't like that because now... Oh, yeah, but no early 10s, of course, is it, Jim, in the World no, Championship? No, early 10s. It, it does count, though, doesn't it, as a, a ball to keep you going? It just gets respotted. Oh, it? It, yeah, absolutely. But um, he probably wouldn't have played that shot if there were early 10s. But again, just looks like there's still... He, I mean, Coe's having a look at that 3 now, if there's room. And there might just be room for that 3 to squeeze by the 10. That's how tough the hook was that he played. 
Well, if it does, Jim, pass that 10 ball, the table all of a sudden doesn't look too bad, does it? Ball in hand, of course. And the four in close proximity, so Cole will want to get right behind that three. If he does decide to attack that three past the 10, he'll want to get real close to it. A four right there, as I said, so he won't have to do anything special with the cue ball. Yeah, this is a touchy one. Didn't take any risk. So it obviously goes, Jim, with a little bit of clearance. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so... Yeah, he's playing the three corners. I, I'm not so sure it did go, Mark. So he's going to try and play a three-cushion safety. This is really a snooker safety. Oh, he's left oh, it. Yeah, it's gone wrong. Yeah, he's left it. Even if Oi has to jump, there's no way Cole wanted that three over the corner pocket. You've played a few of those safeties in your time, Jim. The old cocked hat around the, the angles on the reds. It's a standard safety on a 6x12 for sure. Played this beautifully. Look at that for a shot. Interesting that uh, a friend of Naoki Oys, and naoki has been in uh, in our club in Toronto. He was there just over a year ago. They were doing some filming there, but uh, one of our very good customers, Kakuma, is a Japanese photographer, and he follows Oy around the world. All the big tournaments that he plays in, he takes photos and follows all the Japanese players. Oi being one of them, the stars, and covers the game for the magazine back in Japan, even though he lives in Toronto. Yes, I actually met him. You introduced me to him when I was in your club. I was there, of course, for the Mik That's right, you might have met him in Puerto Rico. He was there as well, Mark. I did meet him in Puerto Rico as well. That's right, yes, because you had no Kioi, you had Sky Woodward, Jason Clatt was there, of course. Uh, Victor Zelensky as well was at your club, wasn't he? I remember that time. Yeah, Mika. The tournament there. Mika Rimlin, yeah. Beautiful shot. Well, uh, he's punishing away. He's punishing Ko for that mistake. Nicely done. So this 10 ball for first blood. And it goes. Now then, this is the second batch of matches. We started at 10 a.m. local time this morning. Eklund Kachi, defending champion, has gone through to the winner's side second round, beating Sky Woodward in straight sets. Yannick Pongas from Holland beat Sina Valiza Day. Now, you remember that name, don't you, from the first tournament, Jim? Valiza Day, you remember that guy? I, I certainly do. You, you had to educate me how to pronounce his name properly. Yeah, and I almost just forgot when I was trying to say it then. <laughs> uh, he lost in the first round to young Yannick Pongas. Now, you might remember him. He won one of the junior events in Austria last year. 
and uh, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest scores as well there's another batch of matches going on at this moment but back to this one Nuki Oit breaking off almost made the four railer there Jim the six ball but no friends at the table yeah Oi doesn't have the resume that Copin Yi does but it's funny how event to event and you know, you really, the winners, this is such an elite field. Only 64 players, and there's no soft draws in this in this field, believe me. Yeah, and we were there at the Rio last year, Jim. If you remember, it was 128 players competing for the title that Catchy ended up winning, beating the man in form at that time, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Uh, stopped Ruiz from holding all three titles simultaneously eight ball nine ball ten ball well, that's another mistake on the safety shot Jim from Copigny does this sneak in Jim he's looking it's at it very thin cut very thin cut if it does. Oi likes to attack, as I said, but he's no fool. Takes his chances. Very much a percentage player. And he won't attack unless the rewards outweigh the risks. The cameraman thinks he's going for it, and he did, right in the heart of the pocket. And look at the control on the cue ball, Jim. Wants it to slow up, though. Doesn't want it on the rail. Mm, it's okay. It's going to have to go back and forth, though, for the three into the same pocket. Oh, it's short. It's short of pace. Still just okay. Look, he can just get to the left hand side of that cue ball. It might well be careering into either the six or the seven here, Jim. Yeah, and holding for position. Yeah, he just flicked his Q tip there. Mm. I think he might have fouled Mark, and that's what he was. He's that was his reaction. He might have just flicked the nine. He definitely yeah, touched to see something. That again. Yeah, he wasn't on the four ball, but of course he would love to have had the next shot. Now this with ball in hand is a gilt edge opportunity for Copigny, oldest of three. Paul playing brothers was the best of the three for a long time but I think you have to say middle co coping Chung has taken over that mantle for now anyway yeah I, I think that's very fair to say super nice guys around the venue always together Always willing to pose for pictures. They're probably the most sought after threesome there are. Everyone wants to sell three with them, don't they? All hardened with money games over the years, too. All the Coes, though, diminutive in stature, Mark, they, uh, they've they got big names. Yeah, they're very and famous. Reputation. Very famous in Taiwan, Jim. They're like rock stars in Taipei. And 1-1 one, one confirmed. Angela Williams just getting the balls from the pockets. 
it's been a, a revelation in terms of refereeing as well. The European Pocket Billiard Federation referees have, have all come across the Atlantic to join forces with the Predator Pro Billiard Series and, you know, bring an element of professionalism and, you know, overseeing of all the rules of the game. Yeah, and I don't know whether I was commentating with you before, Jim. There was a lot of comments saying that, you know, they're being too harsh and that. But I think if you want the the sport of pool to grow, then it has to be, you know, the rules have to be adhered to. Everyone needs to know the rules and, you know, take it forward in a good, positive, level playing field, so to speak. Well, zero for two from Co. in terms of success on the break. Even though he did make a ball in his first break, but he had no joy on the one. Oh, very close to the bank shot. A chance for Copigny has the problem of the three ball, but the three eight six is on Jim looking. He's just had come round and had a look at that. And he could leave himself on the three over the over the side pocket as well when he gets to that. So one and the two get to where he is about now on that three ball. That's looking ahead a few shots. There's Albin Ocean in the background. Yeah, he won his first match quite handily. Mario He, another Austrian who went through against one of your own, Jim, Stephen Holem, and also well, Max Lechner was actually sent to the one loss side by Daniel Maciel. We all know about Daniel. Great player from Poland. Well, I know I saw that Albin had won his match, but you think I can find him in the draw? Uh, there he is. He, he has he played he yet, Jim? No, he's 3 nothing ahead right now as we speak. I thought he had won his match, but he's in the background. He must be playing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's three nothing ahead in the moment. first. That was well judged. If Oi has enough room to get that cue ball, Co may not like his next visit. Just needs to get it just the other side of the eight. Oh, that's no, a mistake. What it. a mistake. Huge mistake. Oh, that you was can only a safety put that shot. down to nerves, Mark. Yeah, that's a safety shot that you see players playing in the club day in, day out, isn't it? That, Jim, it was a simple little shot, really, wasn't it? Just misjudged. Yeah, just one of those little touch shots. He just had to play a little bottom to get that cue ball past the eight. But again, when, when you're a little nervous and you know, you're just twitchy, those little touch shots, they can go awry. There's Angela overseeing proceedings yeah. here. And Jason Klatt as well, just behind her. We just saw in that picture, one of your own very, very good player, very underrated. Not by the players though. Yeah, it really is a strong field. Only 64 deep, but 64 the best. Mentioned Coping Yu's brother, Coping Chung. He's in action as well on an, an outer table against Mikel Oagard. And middle coat, 2 1 up 
at the moment in the first set. He could get through to that, but decided to play it round first just to move the cue ball around the, the angles a bit easier. It's easy to get trapped in those corners, isn't it, Jim, when the, when the object falls so deep? Absolutely. And, I mean, you can also make mistakes when you're trying to flick it in off the rail. And he wanted to assure himself of an angle on the seven. Get back down for the eight. Needs a bounce. That's okay. Nice. Just a soft stun in. Well, there's certainly well, a looks Canadian... like that little hiccup. Sorry, Mark. Looks like that Carry little on, hiccup from Oi is going to be costly. He started out strong, but. He somehow manufactured to lose the last two racks, so Copigny 2 1 in front. Yeah, well, that mistake on the three, they say, you know, millimeters make such a difference, and that's all it was just caught the eight ball instead of sliding past it, which gave Copigny a nice look at the three, and you saw the rest cleared up nicely Alex Pagulion another one but there's a, a Canadian invasion at the moment Jim in the States yeah, he was Alex one, one with Josh Filler I had yeah, a look at that two, score one. a few minutes ago he's 2-1 ahead now yeah 2-1 ahead uh, Josh Filler in that one uh, Josh Filler 2-1 yeah yeah I mean there's just no easy draws you know, just to let our folks at home know, too, and, and this is almost a, an apology for now and the future, but Mark and I are 12 hours away from each other in terms of time difference. And his voice bouncing off the satellite to me, my voice bouncing off the satellite to him, you know, there's that lag time, that delay. And uh, if we do accidentally talk over each, each other, it's, it's almost unavoidable. So I do apologize, and... Uh, I'll try not to cut Mark off too often. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Jim, I have a solution. You do this rack and I'll do the next rack and we'll just alternate racks. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be one solution for sure. <laughs> so, shot on the two ball. Three ball in the same position it was last rack. Look, exactly. Yeah, he's shaking his head. Just nothing has really opened up easy following the break yet. Not allowing these players to string anything together. I think if it was if it was easy to get on the three, he would have played the shot by now. He may just opt for a safety. It looks like he's going for it. Yeah, safety shot. Once again, not getting tight in behind the 10 ball. But I think it's... Has he got a bit of this, Jim, do you think? Or is he jumping? I think he's chalking up for the jump. Yeah, it's close. Oh, he does, Mark. He does have this two sticking out. And he went for it. He's bumped that five into a very safe area. Yeah, Even though he's left the Jim. two. Would he maybe risk going into those balls on the side rail off of this two? Off of the short rail? He'd only risk it if he can dig down and get into the five. He doesn't want to hit the nine. But off that short rail mark, it would be super risky. It 
Let's see what he's got in mind. Yeah, no risks at all. Will dictate exactly how he goes about his business because he's got so many options with that four or two. Obviously, it's available. And has he come far enough? This is close. Looks like the five banks, if he wants to get the cue ball back out into the middle of the table, the five looks like it'll bank. But I'm not so sure he's come far enough. May hold the cue ball behind the nine. Well, I like that I shot that was, because... Yeah, that was that was simply born of the fact, Mark, that he just couldn't really get into the four well enough to get the cue ball where it is now to go at the five. So, it's not worth the risk. Yeah, I like the way he bumped the nine out of the way as well there, Jim, because now the five ball goes. So, if... Or he does give him a shot on this four ball, the five is now in the open. Yeah, advanced. Mark, very advanced. Well, it's going to be ball in hand, so can put it where he wants to get the desired angle to get on that five ball, and I think it does go past that nine, Jim. Prince of Paul. What's that Corey Duell's name? Yeah, I was just going to say, Jim, that was Corey Jewel, but now we have two of them. We have the new Prince. I told him once when I met him in Manila, he should call himself King Cobra. Like Cobro, you know? I think that's what he should be called. to be king of the 10 ball world when this event winds down to a conclusion and trust me when I tell you he is one of the names that they look for in the draw he's been to the winner's circle numerous times already he knows what it takes This to go on the hill in our first set best of three sets of course in stage one Yeah, no danger whatsoever. Rock solid. Good safety play. And that's twice now. Just aggressive safeties have forged openings for Co. Now let's just talk about the format, Jim, very, very quickly. It's changed from last year's format, of course, where it's a straight race to eight at this particular stage. And in the match that you just commentated at the start, I watched... Uh, Jason Shaw and Dennis Grabert. Now, they both shared the first sets 4-3, 4-3, respectively, which basically made it 7-7. Seven, seven. OK, so in last year's format, that would now be just a hill-hill match with only one rack to go. However, with this new format, I like it more because the players have an even better chance. So instead of maybe not getting a shot on the hill hill break situation right they now have a chance of another four racks if you like another you know race to four so i kind of like that and it ends up as a race to 11 basically mark you know what we we were talking about this just prior to going to air and um 
I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. Dennis and Jason, the last match I commentated, effectively it was 10-10 in racks. And instead of just playing one rack, as a decided, look at all the balls just following each other into that corner pocket. A very <laughs> unique break. But it, instead of, you know, just the, the one rack to decide it, well, now you've got the shootout. So effectively four shots. So I, if yeah. the players don't like it because they think it's too short, well, it's the exact opposite. That break was strange, wasn't it? All three balls going like the Copin Yi train into that top left hand pocket. And he's going to add another one in there now. Look, the three balls going to go, maybe even the four as well. He's going to fill that pocket up if he's not careful. Is yeah, he going to well, empty it? <laughs> <laughs> Predator make the tables and the pockets, and Copin Yi fills them. We were playing one pocket for a minute there, Jim. We're back to normal, though. That's yeah, amazing. Five balls gone, and they were all in the same pocket. Until if Earl Strickland had, center. if Earl Strickland had his way, the side pockets wouldn't be there either, so he wouldn't have been able to play that five in there. He's not going to be able to get close to the nine, so he's going to have to content himself with a little distance. Stroke that beautifully. The arrows on the Arcos cue ball there, spinning, just taking it a little bit towards the nine ball. And the 9 and the 10 will be going back in that pocket. And all the balls, Jim, have gone all in that side, haven't they? Oh, no, apart from the 8 ball. For the first set. And the break laid the foundation for that fourth and final rack that seals the deal in set number one for Copin Yi. A 4-1 winner. And very convincing started to flex his muscle a little bit there didn't he mark yeah he looked strong didn't he he made a couple of errors early on but then so did nokioi notably that three ball when he was trying to get behind the eight and that started this landslide from Copigny and he's nipped out for a quick break so while he does that we can have a look at these stats jim what stands out for you there anything particular I don't know if you're seeing the same stats that I'm seeing, but they were the last match that I commentated the stats I'm looking at. Well, let's have a look at Jason Shaw versus Dennis Grabe then, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> and, I'll tell you what. And we're... When you were, it's, but it's amazing when you were t when you were talking about the length of the match and how long it, it was ten racks each, and they just naturally put this graphic up. I thought, well, that's pretty handy. They're they're pretty much illustrating what we were talking about so um, no, the, the timing of that was ideal really almost but, like it was on um, purpose Jim you know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well Copendi has just... stepped out now well while he's he's gone he uh, we you know you were telling me that Tyler Steyer uh, was it a rack that he lost for being too late on a bathroom break no, it was Sky Woodward who lost that, and he went on oh, to sorry, lose Sorry, Sky the... Woodward, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, Sky Woodward went on to lose in straight sets. Then Shane Van Boning, good news for the American, well, for one American, because he got a walkover against Jeremy Sose for whatever reason that was. So Shane went straight through, and at the moment, Tyler Steyer is playing against Yip King Ling Liao, and... The American is 3-1 down in that one. Now, I'd like to talk very quickly, Jim, about the doubles, the Scotch doubles. I thought that was a, a really cool little event, that, a little one-day event. Eight teams, one by Chang and Chao Chai Yu. I thought it was a really, really entertaining 
little format. How did you see it? Yeah, very much so. And, and you know what? I was super impressed with uh, with how Kazakis and Kelly Fisher, as you so aptly named them, Kilzakis. Team Kilzakis. <laughs> and uh, I, I thought that was brilliant. But, um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they just gelled. They played at the same pace. They had the same style of play. And I thought that was... Uh, was for me a a point that stood out in into how they got to the final now they didn't win but um but they look so strong i commentated one of their matches and they they look like they really gelled i bet they can't wait for another mixed doubles event the two of them well i bet nukio can't wait to make a ball it's dry again and he must surely play the one two Karam here, Jim. What do you think? Well, he would, Mark, if he could guarantee. Yeah, if he could guarantee himself position to the one, but there's just no guarantee of that. And I mean, it's a shot that I'd favor him to get, but position to the one just isn't guaranteed, so it's just not worth the risk. So you're going to see defense here. Yeah, good call. And when uh, Co decides to go on the defense, let me tell you, that's with a capital D. Looks like a jump kick. The jumping Japanese joke up. Oh, the Jays. We've got a double J in Paul. Jeremy Jones, of course. We've got a triple J now. Yeah, again, the mistake extracted by virtue of just a, a lock-up safety from Copigny. He's it's having a forged bit of a, yet another opening. He's having a bit of a torrid time, isn't he, Jim, at the moment? Copigny really is stitching him up, so to speak. I'm looking for problems and I don't see any. I was about to ask you, are there any banana skins on that table, Jim? Or is it plain sailing? No slip ups. The only the only banana skin I see is the one that's going out the door and Nayuki Oi has one foot on it. <laughs> Copenhagen was in the Mixed scotch doubles as well, played with Wei Chu Chen. Gonna be looking for the gap between the nine and the ten here, I would think. I don't think he'll risk coming all the way down. No, I think you're right. Big area. <laughs> Yeah, content himself with distance here. He just needs to leave himself a little angle on this five. Doesn't look like he's done it. I thought he'd try and get more. Well, actually, this isn't too bad. He can draw this straight back. That's one thing about pool. And, uh, you know, you distance is not necessarily your enemy on a pool table. Angle is the key. Yeah, it's the opposite, isn't it? To snooker, you always want to try and be more or less, you know, just a, not dead straight in, of course, all the time, but a lot straighter. You would never leave this as a, a hanger, would you, Jim, on a snooker table? Well, no. I mean, snooker is more full ball contact. Pool the exact opposite. 
and uh, again on a pool table down the rails you know the pockets are more generous the exact opposite of a snooker table so this is a key shot coming here he's showing you got to be very careful that nine is in the equation because he's dead straight on the seven so he's really got a guard against drawing right behind that nine he'd like to clip it yeah he erred on the side of being short mark just because he was so worried about drawing in behind it but this can go wrong he might be flipping off the edge of the 10 here Angela Williams having a, a close look So the 10 Two come up. The price of one. The, yep, the 10 spots up, and that actually helps him because he's so nicely situated on the 9. Going to be able to take the cue ball and get it nice and close to that 10. And I'm so used to seeing that 10 ball placed like that now, Jim, because of the shootout shot. It kind of looks weird when referees don't place the 10 back on the, the spot, you know, in a normal game that way. I like it. The blue cheese coming up for this rack to take an early advantage. Nukioi doesn't look very happy, does he, Jim? Well, he hasn't. Ever since the first rack, he hasn't had a lot to smile about. Kopenyi has shut the door on him. Some great safety play. You know, they've forged the openings, and he's taken full advantage of them. one nothing in set number two. A set that Oi has well, to win. Well, listen to this for a semi-shock, I suppose you would call it. One of the favourites for this World Temple title, a name that always comes up when you're wondering who might be there at the end of the tournament. He reached the semi-final last year, Fedor Gorst. He's one set down to Conrad Musician, and Musician is on the hill 3-0 in the second set. So Fedor Gorst could be going to the one loss side very, very early on this year. Now, Mark, you asked me about the mixed doubles, and Fedor Gorst was paired with his girlfriend, Christina Tkach, and. I thought they looked very vulnerable in that match. I don't think that sort of play brought out the best in Fedor Gorst. I think he is so much of a rhythm player. And in doubles, you really have to sacrifice your rhythm. And, you know, you're working in tandem. It's impossible to get a set rhythm because you're alternating shots at the table. But I just don't think that brought out the best in Fedor Gorst. And uh, I wonder if he's carried that lack of confidence through to this World Ten Ball Championship. You never know. Yes, yeah, a very poignant point, Jim. Another player who isn't well renowned for his doubles play is Shane Van Boning and him and Alison Fisher I thought would do very, very well. They actually went out in round one in that as well. But luckily for Shane, he's had a walk over today, so plenty of time to practice he goes through to the next round without having played a match. Albin Ocean through as well, straight sets. Where's the cue ball? Oof. Well, he'll be jumping this. The co jump yeah. stick will be out for this one. Again, he didn't want that one near the pocket because that's an opportunity. And Nayuki Oi knows it. And it's He'll just be jumping nice to jumping three, distance. trying to kill the speed. It is perfect jumping distance, Mark. And he'll just be trying to kill the speed to keep the cue ball down there for the two. Now you see why no Oi didn't like it. Really good video of this young man 
on YouTube in his home room in Taiwan, running out a rack of pull with just his jump stick. Really is an entertaining little rack that's worth seeking out on his YouTube channel. He's overcut this gym. He's overcut that. Oh, he won't want to see that again. Oh, he's been lucky because he's held his hand up. Can he go round first? If he had a step ladder, he could. This is where he wishes he would have taken the advice of his physiotherapist and gone to those yoga classes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm getting, I'm hurting just watching it, Jim. Oh no, look at the oh, cue ball. It's not his yeah, day, is it? So unlucky. So unlucky. I mean, from the cue ball in the middle of the table and, you know, the praying mantis form that Oi showed us to be able to jump, he certainly didn't deserve that. Well, if I'd have got up on that table like that, I'd have, I'd have had to have asked the referee to help me off, I think, because I'd never have got off, let alone get the on, physio, maybe. The physio would have been called instantly in the stretcher right behind him. I was going to say, 9-1-1 would be the call, I think. Five just goes past this seven. If not, it's perfect if he wants to play the combination. I saw him eyeing it up right at the start, so let's see what his game plan is. The five would track down towards the corner, too, so looks like it goes. No, didn't matter. It was always going to be controlled. And he had a look at that before he even played the shot with ball in hand, Mark. So he knew exactly what he was doing, thinking three shots ahead. Oh, he's overhit this by about at least three foot. And he's just having a little bit of a run of the ball at the moment. He missed that two ball and then hooked Nukioi, which brought the scratch from the Japanese, not so much joker at the moment. He's, well, he's, he's struggling, isn't he, at the moment. This is going to be 2-0, Jim. Yeah, but Cole won't take his foot off the gas pedal. I think that's what we saw from Jason Shaw in the first match. He won the first set. He was 3 nothing ahead in the second set against Dennis Grabby and uh, I'll tell you what Dennis ended up coming back winning the second set 4-3 and then forcing the shootout and Jason never missed a ball in the shootout but he really did let up you got to guard against that complacency No complacency from Mr. Co. In it goes. 2-0 doubles his lead in this second set. Well on his way now. And John Mora, another Canadian in action. He's just taken the first set gym against another Japanese player. Hiyato Hijikata. John leading that one. He's been playing well recently, Jim. John Mora. I know he plays a lot in your club. Lovely guy. Yeah, he uh, he really does. When he's in Toronto, he's he's a fixture in the club, practicing by himself, and playing snooker too. He had a big money match with one of our uh, our top players, Sahil Nair, in the club, and ended up getting beat. Hill Hill and John just decided to take one of the best snooker players on, and they played for twenty five grand. So. Wow. He's, he's got so much courage and so much heart. And, I'll, and if there's a more talented player in the world, left-handed, right-handed, tremendous. 
you know, you think about O'Sullivan on a snooker table. But John is was a, a world class player right handed, changed to left handed, and is a world class player left handed. I don't know anyone else can boast that. Yeah, pretty strong. Now then nothing on the break this time for Co. two greats in the background there Barry Berman and Mark Griffin a couple of legends in Q Sports Jim I know you've met them both on many occasions I'm sure two great guys who we lost recently lost too early now two of the real builders of the sport certainly Mark starting the BCA leagues. Barry, with his involvement in the US Open, legendary what he started as well. Yeah, we mentioned the CSI there. There are around 6,000 league players under that Rio roof at the moment, playing their singles, doubles, teams, going for their championships alongside these world-class pros he's overhit this one slightly though he hasn't made many mistakes has he in the defense defensive end and this is a half a mistake tried to get that cue ball behind the four now this is a very difficult ask but Nayuki's had so little to go at you know he's going to attack this one thin cut into the corner Over done it. Now then, does he need the jump stick? Or can he just swerve it around and come round first on this gym, do you think? On this short That's rail. Close. That seven's in the way. I think he's going, yeah, rail first. So he's looking for a thin clip on this one. And then he's got to miss all the traffic, that 10 and 8, because... Oh, no, he's he's going... The short rail is trying to swerve it right around. I thought he was going to the side rail, Mark, but no. Still not out of the woods. No. I think he's going in behind the four ball here. No intentions of making this. He did just call the pocket. In case, watch, he doesn't go in the side off of the seven. I'm not sure what he's playing, actually. Yeah, in behind the four. Did he get there? The extension called by Oi. He really has had a minimal amount of table time. And more times he's come to the table. He's had very little with which to try and build upon. Here he just again, he's just trying to buy some time. He's been snookoed. And another opening for Copinier. Yeah, look at this, Jim. This is a real guilt edge opportunity. Okay, the eight ball doesn't go. Yeah, right now, Mark, that's the only insurance policy I see for, for Roy. Already 2 nothing in the second set. So we'll see what this Asian genius can concoct here. Because I guarantee you he's thinking about that eight ball. Yeah, I'll tell you, I just noticed something, and that's good refereeing by Angela Williams. She's always looking at Copigny's mouth to just wait for the call. It is a cool shot they're playing. So she's looking to see what he's calling. I call that smart refereeing, actually. Now, depending 
on how Co attacks the five ball over the corner pocket bottom right. In the angle that he leaves himself on the six, he could could elect to try and draw in behind the 10 and, and flick that eight under the, out into the open. He's still going to drop onto the seven. So he developed that situation. That's what he's looking at right now, the angle that he wants on the six. Yeah, the only way it could go wrong maybe is if he catches it a little bit too thin and gets hidden behind the eight or something. You never know, do you, when you're going into other balls, Jim. That's why players don't like doing it. Oh, don't catch the seven. Oh. Well, he doesn't have much angle on the six now. So if he wants to try and draw in behind the 10 and flick that eight, which is what he's looking at with his cue, he's going to have to hit this with a bit more force. Not very much angle. He's going to have to manufacture it. This can go wrong, goes without saying. He's looking very fidgety, isn't he, on this? This is key shot, and this will get him on the hill, remember. Real key shot. Played it perfectly, Jim. Yes, he did. Perfect speed, getting that eight over the side pocket. Now up and down. Yeah, when he catches that gear. You can understand why a lot of people can see Ko as one of the players to beat in this event. Because he makes the oh, tricky look. situations look easy. He yeah, was a really smart shot, wasn't it? On that six ball, Jim played to absolute perfection. And somebody else playing some great ball at the moment is Alex Pagulion. He's taken the first set and he's 1 1 in the second set with Josh Filler. So Pagulion 1 up in that one. Now, Jim. Yeah, John, John Mora actually uh, played Josh Filler in the Las Vegas Open and beat him two sets to nil. So I'm thinking Josh Filler doesn't like anything to do with Canadians. Well, we also have starting today our women's showdown. 16 players, eight of the top seeded in the world against eight invited players. And that all begins at 4 p.m. local time. And our first match on table one, Christina to catch, is up against Kelly Fisher. That's a classic. Good break, Jim. Oh, as it and he's on as the hill. No really and he can get through to this one. Ten ball just got out of the way of the two as well as the balls were coming to rest. So if he can make this across the table, back to the centre of the table, he'll have a shot on the two. Cut it, hit it too thick, and now a chance for Nukioi to save the set and get back in this match. Somebody else back in the match, Fedor Gorst has reduced the gap to 3-2 in the second set against Conrad Usician after Usician won the first set. Oh, that was a hot racing moment there for Nukioi.
Well, I just wonder if this is going to be a carbon copy of the first match I did where Jason Shaw played so well in the first set then raced out to a 3-0 advantage and looked like it was going to be early days and back came Dennis Crabb. And I just wonder if Oi has still got a little to say about this match. more than capable mark we know that yeah he's been a semi-finalist in a world championship before he's got all the ingredients he just needs them all to mix together at the right time Feeling pretty comfortable in his chair. Why not? Three nothing. The advantage. He just doesn't want to get too comfortable in it, though. Nukioi. I'm sure he's going to finish this rack no problem, and he'll be breaking in the next. But hasn't been very successful on the break so far, Jim. So needs to get the break working if he's going to do any damage in this WPA Predator. World Temple Championships. Yeah, he can string a few breaks together. I mean, the best he can do is get to the third set and try and apply a little pressure to Ko. Ko has looked so strong. There haven't been many shots that have gone wayward for him today. I don't know, did you, uh, in the Las Vegas Open, Mark, did you get a chance to see... FSR play his match against Federer Ghost, Francisco Sanchez Riz against Gorse. Did you see any of that? I saw some of it. Arguably the Repeat best it. pool match I've ever commentated. He never missed a ball. He bid Gorse for love for love in 40 minutes. Just over 40 minutes. And it was an unbelievable display of pool. Well, if you remember, Jim, you and I commentated on their World Temple semi-final last year, and that was an absolute cracker as well. It was actually won on three fouls in the end, wasn't it, by uh, Fedor Gorst, Sanchez Ruiz, getting through to the final, where he lost out to Catchy. If you have one of Conflict Well, here's a semi yeah, shot where for do you, you push? Jim. Can't go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say, I've just had a score flash up on my screen. Robbie Capito is one set to zero up and three zero up in the second set on guess who? Victor Zelensky, the back to back winner of the Las Vegas Open. So Zelensky in danger of going to the one loss side early on as well. Now, can he spin this enough to flick that one in? That's what he's looking at. This is a, a real, a real strategic little push from Naoki Oi. What does he have in mind? That's what Kopenyi is asking himself. What does he know that I don't? Well, he's kicking from mm. the bottom cushion. Ko, Ko never even looked at that. How about this? How about this for courage, Mark? Yeah, and he's going to be on the two, isn't he, as well? Just has to drop it in, and he's got a shot on the two in the side. Three waiting over the top right corner on your screens. So it has to make this, though. Dead weight. He's made it. It's there all the way. Good push, Nokioi. Ko's probably going to be Ko never even came down to have a look at that. But the elder statesman just took the younger Co back to school. Yeah, there's a lesson, isn't there, they say, in everything. And I'm sure he'll look back on that 
Copigny, if he goes on to lose this, especially, and think to himself, yeah, I need to study a bit more of the shots before I make a rash decision. And you're right, Jim, he only looked at that one option. Well, why is shaking his head? Maybe he's gone too far on this three. We had. We did. Well, has he got away with it? Co, the only attacking option. Cushion first. Cushion three, and then call the ten. Cue ball will be tracking right down towards the ten. Difficult to tell if that's on. Wow. Wow. I couldn't play that shot, Mark. But I got to well, tell you one you thing. If that isn't a testament to how Co feels about trusting these predator tables, nothing does. Slow rolling a ball over that distance. Gutsy. don't think this is hard enough Jim is it it's a clear path to the three ball this is a chance for six combo is on so it hasn't got to worry about any position just has to stroke this ball in just cue it nice keep the head still the only thing that should be moving is the back arm smoothly through that cue ball Yeah, it wasn't easy. When he plays at such a high standard, anything in the open you expect him to get. Oh, where's he gone with this? We well, have to play the billiard now, I think. Will he or will he still play the combo? Don't think he can play the billiard. It's going to have to be the combo. No, the the combination one. is still on. You getting the feeling that this match is done in about face? He brought up the Jason Shaw. Dennis Grabe again, and you could be right, Jim. It's heading in the same direction, isn't it? It's such a, a fickle game, Paul. The balls never forgive you. One shot can turn a whole match. Three, two, and counting. Now he's looking the confident one, isn't he? It's all completely done a 180, Jim. <laughs> well, we'll see if he can put a good break together to keep the run going. And 
Angela Williams getting those Arcos two balls nice and tightly racked. Give Nukioi the best possible chance of making a ball. Gorst has gone 3 3 in the second set. He's clinging on, fighting like we know he does. Poor Rayla wobbling. No joy for Oi. <laughs> Was that the microphone that just fell? <laughs> I dropped my wallet. I dropped my wallet on the floor, Jim. Sorry about that. I, I thought you might have tripped over it. <laughs> Sorry, guys, no if it joy, made a loud bang. No joy for Roy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, I tell you, his, one of his logo badges is, was coming loose there, and if that falls on a ball, it's a foul. Well, he's just held that cue ball in time for the two, the three. No problem getting on it either. Everything's open. The break that has deserted Oi could prove his undoing. Yeah, four six is the obvious shot. I'm guessing that's the last thing that could possibly go wrong, I think, to save Oi in this rack. Looking to see if it actually goes, Jim, I think. Oh, no, he's playing the combo all along. Nicely controlled, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely perfect. The angle to get over onto the five. Seven over the opposite side. Eight there. Uh, you've got to fear the worst if you're a Naoki Oi fan. Alex Pagalayan, as we said, won the first set, and he's 2-1 ahead of Josh Filler in set number two. Yeah, Koping Chung game well as well now. Took the first set, Jimmins 2-0 up in a second against Mikel Elgard. Roman Hebler has beaten Simon Kural from Poland. That's quite a shock, that one there. The Czech player. Living in Germany, Roman Hebler, married to Yvonne Ullman Hebler, who will be playing. Well, no, she won't be in the showdown, but she did play in the Las Vegas Women's Open. He's gone through two sets to zero. Yeah, I think it's over and out for the likable Naoki Oi. Yeah, just never got going, did he, Jim? Today, unfortunately, Coping Yi in the early stages, his safety was just so good. Tied up Oi in knots, didn't he? And uh, he'll walk yeah. out of the arena very disappointed with that performance. I think Naoki Oi overall. Jim, what do you reckon? Sum it up in a couple of sentences for us. Yes, I think so, Mark. I think that uh, Ko Pinyi, his safety play, forged the opening, and that's what really put Naoki Oi under pressure. And 
Mexico just raced off to a 3 nothing advantage in the second set, and that was really all she wrote in this one, my friend. Thanks very much for watching, guys. All lots of action coming up for you throughout the day. We have more games coming up for you very, very soon. It's the women, though, who take centre stage in the next round at 4 p.m. We have the women's showdown on this table. Kelly Fisher against Christina to catch Jim White and myself, Mark White. Thank you for your company, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Thanks for watching. See ya.